What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. My name's Tony. So during this lockdown, I've been lucky enough to have kept busy mixing projects for clients that have recorded their songs in their own home studios. Now this has been a lot of fun for me and for everybody else involved, but it seemed to me like in almost every project I've done, I've had to walk people through how to properly consolidate and send me their files. There's three recurring problems that happen. Either people send me their raw WAV files without consolidating them, meaning they're all jumbled up when I fly them into my session, and I have to contact the client to find out where exactly everything lines up, or they simply send me their session file, RPP for Reaper or PTX for Pro Tools, which is essentially a roadmap that your program looks to to find where to read the audio files from, but doesn't actually include any audio. Well, the third one happens with Reaper users, where they go into their audio folder, find all the files that they've recorded, but grab the repeaks files instead of the waves files which also doesn't contain any audio, it's just the visual representation of the waveform that Reaper creates once you drag audio in or record audio into the timeline. So today I'm going to show you how to properly consolidate your files in Reaper so you can send them off to a mix engineer. Alright guys, so I've just pulled up a bunch of random tracks here. We've got a few up at the top that I've punched in at different points along the timeline. We've got these ones on the green tracks here that have been comped, so there's been a bunch of different takes that we've edited together to be one. And we've also got a stereo track down at the bottom. So the first thing that you're going to want to do before we even start talking about consolidating these tracks is make sure that your tracks are labeled on the left hand side of the track control panel here and that any edits that you've done, for example in this comped track that I've included, are clean and properly crossfaded. If you haven't made sure that your edits are nice and smooth and crossfaded, you may end up with odd clicks and pops in your audio that your mix engineer may not be able to get rid of. So once you've got all the tracks labeled and your edits cleaned up, you're going to go up to the very top of your timeline and double click. That should create a time selection over all of the tracks within your session. Now if you're sending all of the tracks within your session to your mix engineer, then you won't need to worry about this next step. But if there's only a few tracks that you're going to be sending, you'll want to, on the left hand side of the track control panel, select all those tracks by holding down the control button and clicking on them. Now for the sake of this example, I'm going to be consolidating all of them, so I'm not going to worry about that. Next, you'll go to the top left hand corner to File, and down to Consolidate slash Export Tracks. That'll pop up with this menu that gives you a whole lot of options. I'm just going to guide you through the main ones here. Up here on the left hand corner, you have the option to consolidate your entire project, the time selection, or a custom time setting that you can punch in below. We're going to select time selection because we've already made a time selection and that'll make sure that all your audio files end up being the same size and start at the same point and finish at the same point. Over on the right hand side here, we've got a selection for whether we want to consolidate all of our tracks or selected tracks. But as I mentioned earlier, if you only want to consolidate some of your tracks, you will have selected those tracks from the track control panel earlier on. And then you can hit selected tracks. But seeing how we're going to consolidate all of the tracks, I'm going to stick with all. Now this next selection here, ignore silence shorter than selectable seconds. If you're sending these off to a mix engineer, you want to make sure that that box is not ticked. If you have that box ticked, then it won't include certain bits of silence in the consolidated file, which means you could end up with a whole bunch of different files that are meant to be on one track, and your mix engineer will end up having to try and line those up manually, which is something we're trying to avoid, so keep that box unchecked. Now below you can choose your sample rate. If your mix engineer has a specific preference for sample rate, ask them about that and select that one. For me, I prefer being sent the tracks at whatever sample rate they were recorded at. In this case, that's 44.1K, so I'm going to leave it right there. For the channel selection here, you can choose whether all of your tracks are consolidated in mono, stereo, or any other number of channels that you can think of. But this auto source media selection will detect if your track is mono, stereo, surround, or anything else, and keep that format once it's consolidated. So it'll make your mono files mono and your stereo files stereo. Now way down at the bottom here, you can make things easier on yourself by keeping things organized. I would always recommend that you create a brand new folder to consolidate your files into if you're sending them off to your mix engineer. And you do that by hitting the browse button here. You can make a new folder or select an existing folder. I've already made a folder for this titled sample on my desktop, so I'm gonna select that one. So with these next three checkboxes here, if you have them all checked, what it'll do is save your project as it is before you consolidate the files. It'll consolidate your files and fly them into your project over top of the existing tracks and then save that session file as something different. 
I usually select that option because then I have my original session file and a session file where everything is consolidated and all the tracks are solid. However, if you unselect all of those, then when you consolidate your tracks, it'll create the new files in the folder that you've created or directed them to and leave your existing session just the way it is. So for the sake of this example, I'm gonna select all three of them. Once you've got all your settings right, you can hit process. And there you go. That's what your consolidated files will look like. Now as a mix engineer, I love seeing files like this. I can grab them from the folder, fly them into Reaper, and everything lines up just perfectly. Now once we've got our files consolidated, we can leave Reaper and find the folder that we directed Reaper to consolidate our files to. Now I put mine just on the desktop so it's nice and easy to find. There it is, sample. And when you open it up, there's all the tracks that you just consolidated. Now I've got Reaper set to save my re-peaks files or the visual representation of the waveform to a different folder elsewhere on my hard drive. But if you don't have Reaper set up that way, you'll see two versions of each of these files. One labeled .wave at the end, and one labeled .repeaks at the end. When you send your files off to a mix engineer, you're going to want to grab just the .wave files. The .repeaks files are smaller, and they will fit in a single email without having to use a third-party transferring system. But they don't contain any audio, so they won't do your mix engineer any good. So you can select all of your audio tracks and use whichever means you and your mix engineer have determined to send the files. I usually prefer Dropbox or Google Drive, but WeTransfer is also an option I've used regularly. Well, there you go guys, that's all it takes. I hope that demonstration has been clear and that it makes things easy for you. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you've liked this video and would like to see more content like this one, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, hit that like button, and leave me some comments down below. Thanks again for watching guys, we'll see you next time.